Hi, this is Lev Akhmet of Anon, explain how to handle promises in your Cypress test. So I have a single test that just loads the page. It works, takes half a second. Now imagine that instead of site visit, I want to do something that has my own code and returns a promise. So I'm going to comment this code and I'm going to paste my code where I have a promise returning delay function and I will use it from the test and I will delay it by two seconds. Now notice that the test did not actually last two seconds, it ran in 40 milliseconds. Well, this is because Cypress has no idea that you wanted to wait for this promise to resolve. Right? It's your own code, it does something asynchronously. Cypress has no idea that the test has to wait for this promise. So one thing that I like to do is to be explicit and say, this is a promise and it's returned by a function that you call, called delay. And if you want the test, to actually wait for the promise to resolve before finishing, use sci wrap. So this command wrap, if you pass it a promise, will wait for the promise to resolve. The cool thing is that you can wrap the same promise multiple times. If it's already resolved, well, it will just immediately finish sci wrap. Notice it's still only two seconds. If your promise resolves with a value, you can wrap the promise and say should equal so anything that was resolved by the promise is yielded down the chain. So here's another uh, trick. What happens when you have a promise and a Cypress command? So in this case, we're not going to wrap anything. Instead, we'll just bring back the Cypress. What happens then? In this case, it helps to actually log the messages. So I have a log message delay start when the promise is created and a log when it actually resolves. Let's open the DevTools larger. So we can see that application also has a couple of messages. So first, the promise is created. And remember, JavaScript promises are eager. As soon as you create them, as soon as there is new promise constructor executed, it starts running. So it starts running right here in line 14. Cypress commands, on the other hand, are chained. They first all change and then they start running because, well, even site visit has to be able to visit a browser a page, right? So the browser has to be ready. So the visit doesn't execute until the previous commands are ready uh, and done and the browser is ready. So in this case, the promise starts to execute immediately, then site visit, and then at some point the delay finishes. And this delay, it finishes out of order, really, say 100 milliseconds, okay? Notice now it actually came before the application uh, loaded, and if I use different values, we can get these messages in any order, right? Let's say 200, okay? So notice they're now mixed, because our promise started running immediately, then say visit start running, and they process, they proceeded in parallel. So if you want to start visit only after the promise is done, right, you have to wrap it. You don't even have to chain anything. Every command is automatically chained. So in this case, you're wrapping the promise, and once it's done, then the visit will start. So even if you, let's say, delay by two seconds, two seconds will pass, and then side visit will start. The only other thing is that what happens if you create promise after you visit? What happens here? We can look at log messages. Again, notice they're mixed, right? Even though we intended the visit to finish first, remember, when you do site visit, Cypress just you know, queues the command. The promise, on the other hand, is eager. It starts running immediately. And the fact that you're wrapping it later, while well, the promise is already running, okay? So if you really want to start a promise after the visit or any previous command is done, put it under. Okay, so then it's kind of universal um, command in Cypress. It literally says after the previous command is done successfully, then execute this code. And in this case, what do you do? You construct the promise only after the visit has finished. So this is why the messages actually appear in the right order. All right. So one other point right here, let's say, so equal 42. So let's just confirm the value. So when you wrap something, it gets passed to the next command. So you can actually attach it all the way here. It runs the same way. 
because visit finishes, then starts, runs the promise, wraps it, and this becomes the new value of the command chain, and that's why it passed all the way to should equal. Another thing you might ask, why do I even have to wrap? Say then, just like promise, if you return a promise, will automatically yield its value. So you don't need to do wrap if you are inside that then callback already. So remember, when you use promises that you created, right? Maybe you use application code, maybe you're running something in a browser, make sure they are created at the right moment, not before, because promises are eager, and also wrap their result or return them from that then so that whatever is resolved from the promise is passed down the line.